Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another Engineering the Markets. And my audio is on. Uh, my name is Jared. This is uh, January 18th, 2023. So, uh, happy Wednesday to everybody. And we'll go ahead and um, kind of take a quick look at our performance yesterday. Uh, we'll shift into covering some of the upcoming earnings, which is the uh, main focal point for the next couple weeks. Um, we'll get into some uh, option related strategy for revolving around earnings. A lot of this should be familiar with those who have joined us last earnings cycle. But for those new and for those maybe looking to add a bit of additional edge to their strategy, uh, some of this information might be of insight. And we'll talk about different ways to approach earnings. Um, <clears throat> while it's true that the main move does tend to happen into the earnings event, some of the option dynamics that take place around a binary event are more attractive to certain types of traders. And in some ways you can leverage different moments throughout the earnings period to basically define your risk uh, as you move through uh, particular assets earnings or particular companies earnings. So we'll talk about some of those dynamics and just try and highlight how they work um, along with the strategies that best take advantage of the dynamic. So starting off, let's um, take a look at the performance yesterday. Um, as we know from yesterday's discussion, we are hitting our sort of weekly trend line resistance. Market was also able to print 400 for the first time this year. So we saw a bit of a stall in our overall rally. Um, Nothing really to be concerned with as of yet. Uh, this is kind of an obvious place to see a little bit more profit taking and maybe a lack of momentum. But as I mentioned before, um, I do not think this trend line attempt is going to hold in the same way that we've seen historically. Um, so be especially cautious trying to uh, short around this area. I think there is a, an incentive by the market to maybe push out a little bit of the short bias for a period of time and then come back later, maybe with some poor market internals and likely start to correct uh, once again. So more of a bullish short term, maybe bearish in the medium term, looking for higher prices uh, to begin looking for the short thesis. And um, all in all, the overall trade yesterday was uh, notwithstanding kind of noisy, we saw a lot of activity at about 398 SPY, uh, which happens to coincide with that trend line, but more or less a psychological uh, price level. And the VPOC for yesterday happened to be centered at 398 um, as the trade kept performing. So all in all, it wasn't necessarily the most active type of day. There wasn't a core trend to kind of hang your hat on. But we did see some um, a slight market internal movement in different sectors. The main focus yesterday happened to be um, in technology, albeit it wasn't an outperformer in sense of, uh, of strong performance, just leading the market to carry its strength. Kind of leave that on the daily performance there. And then I would argue that the rest of the market was either lagging or just seeing um, similar types of stall in its performance. So nothing really to garner here from yesterday's trade. Once again, just kind of looking at how things have been going over the past couple of weeks. Uh, we're trying to get a sense of how the market is pricing for the new year and what sort of sectors are becoming favorable, even though they were maybe disfavorable last year. And one of the standouts has been consumer discretionary. We've seen lots of recovery in our key um, uh, cyclical stocks. Technology has kind of come back into favor, albeit um, we're kind of on watch for that one to be disruptive once again. And then energy has actually been a little bit of a leader over the past week. Some of the um, 
additional demand from China reopening along with uh, the market seeming to still remain in sort of an inflationary theme uh, that's keeping the energy stocks fairly elevated. And for the most part, they are bouncing from a, a sharper pullback back in December. Um, you kind of pair that with some of the defensive names. These are the ones that if the market were looking a bit more recessionary focused, you'd probably expect these to perform better. Uh, but as of now, they are either pulling back a little or starting to see some monetary outflow. And um, some things coming up this next week or so will actually highlight that a bit better. So be on the lookout for a, um, a discussion about that as we get more information. So overall performance yesterday, nothing really to garner. But um, the one thing that's now becoming a, uh, a focus item for the market is, of course, earnings. And as we get into our earnings cycle, it's important to know just when certain stocks are reporting. Um, for the most part, I'll try and do this maybe twice a week. I'm not going to do it every single day just because it gets a little repetitive. But if you are trading earnings, I do recommend going to our trading terminal looking at our earnings calendar and just picking out the tickers that would be of the most interest, starting to do any sort of analysis and then putting together a trade game plan. So <clears throat> um, last week was the bank financial earnings and we'll actually talk about that uh, briefly given it is our Wednesday session. Yesterday we saw capital market reporting and I think there was a big disparity and how the two key underlyings performed, uh, Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs being the two in focus. Um, the, the market performance on Goldman Sachs, while fairly um, bearish on that session, I think was also a consequence of just order flow on the day. Um, not to say that this uh, particular asset didn't deserve to be sort of marked down slightly, but all in all, the type of downside we saw yesterday was sort of a uh, trend beginning more trend. You know, it, as you start to sell, it tends to just force more and more selling throughout the period. And as you can see, there even was a, um, a bounce trade into the afternoon, a bit of a double bottom on the intraday session that a lot of traders were able to capture. But the reason I'm calling this one a little bit of a order flow based sell is simply because the market really didn't expect this type of movement on the earnings itself. Um, it was a bit of a more or less a surprise um, a reaction and the expected move of Goldman Sachs was nowhere near what we saw. Um, you can actually confirm this by going into something that shows the option market prior to the earnings. So in this case, I'm just backing up the option chain, showing it on Monday, which would have been market close for MLK day. And what you'll notice here is that on the week of uh, Goldman Sachs earnings, it was really only pricing about 11 to $12 of expected movement. Obviously the market was closed, but that was how the trade settled on Friday. And as Goldman Sachs had reported um, Tuesday morning here, essentially most of the earnings participants were already in to that option series. So they would have had their trade established by that point in time. So <clears throat> um, looking at the expected move, noticing how deviated the move actually was from what was expected, in this case, uh, Goldman Sachs hit a low of about 344. So we did see almost a two to two and a half times standard deviation of the expected move. Once again, though, remembering that this is a Friday series. So as long as Goldman Sachs sort of recovers back into probably the 350 to 360 range, it would still fall in line to what the option market expected for the week. As far as what the earnings reaction was, I think it was a bit overblown. And that might be some of the reason why the bounce 
in the afternoon trade worked out quite well. It, um, it had a little bit of upside from that low. So um, you compare that reaction to Morgan Stanley, both of these kind of having similar uh, uh, industries that they, they uh, report to. Morgan Stanley did see a um, sort of a multi-week breakout. We're getting over a pretty large area of trade and that's um, not only quite bullish for the, the future of this, um, this chart, but I would also argue that this is going to be opening up a new price region for this stock to trade in the future. Oftentimes we like to talk about price regions mostly in regards to how the stock uh, trades back and forth. Uh, oftentimes it's gonna be a lot of range trading in those periods. <clears throat> And any time an asset can get over or under one of those floor or shelf areas, it often opens up that entire range for future opportunity. So one thing you might be looking for, you know, more as a future trade for this type of stock is actually coming into this lower region, giving you a little bit of a back test and maybe defining the risk a little bit better and then playing towards some of these upper levels if we see continuation strength in um, stocks like these. So um, interesting difference in the actual response to earnings. Once again, did Morgan Stanley uh, do anything exceptional in regards to its earnings expected move? <clears throat> the answer for the most part is um, yes. It did have another fairly large standard deviation breach so um, at its high, it almost hit a, a high side of about 99.20, uh, pulled back quite a bit on the session. And the market itself was pricing about three and a half dollars of volatility. That was, of course, on uh, Monday when the market was closed. So for the most part, both stocks were breaches, but it is a Tuesday report. These are Friday option series and that additional time can allow the market to kind of come back in and still achieve what was the expected move. Because remember, this is all about where you close on the Friday, not the breaches that occur in between. Um, as long as you're coming back in, you kind of get that rubber band effect of, you can stretch the rubber band, it's, it's okay to be outside for a period, but oftentimes it wants to rest back inside of its um, sort of stable state. So with all that said, this is how we're gonna approach most earnings um, reports, albeit there will be a little bit of data gathering in regards to sympathy plays. There's also gonna be some data gathering in regards to how markets are treating um, some of the uncharacteristic outperformance of some of these assets. And I think that's going to be most notable in things like airlines, uh, some of the crypto stocks, which are also uh, seeing a lot of sharp recovery and anything that has an inherent bearish lean in 2022. Um, a lot of the short inventory and the cost to carry is to some regards causing these stocks to rally a bit sharper than most people have expected. So we'll be looking for those types of stocks along with every other major market cap stock that's going to move the S&P and move the NASDAQ. Those are always going to be ones in focus for us to trade. So let me get some water real quick. <clears throat> so let's kick off with um, how did UAL perform? This is one of the assets that, um, that reported yesterday. As you can see, um, last couple of weeks have been uncharacteristically bullish for this stock. Um, pretty much every single week we've been seeing expected move breaches, you know, something that's akin to like two to three times higher than what the option market is pricing. And this is before earnings. So, <clears throat> There's been some massive run-ups in the airliner stocks, and that's the market kind of telling you there is an optimism returning back to these types of uh, these types of companies. Um, a lot of this kind of started with how Boeing was performing. Uh, there's a little bit of 
uh, return to some of their order sets and opening up some of the uh, customers that they've had in the past starting to kind of get back on the books. That has kind of cycled into uh, travel in general, you know, anything that was more or less grounded throughout the, um, the pandemic. There's been a resurgence in some of the travel sector and this includes uh, cruises, airliners, uh, hotels, casinos. A lot of these have been um, recovering, but the airliners have probably been the one that have been the most surprising. Uh, they've, they've been very sharp to the upside. There's almost no pullback. And just the slope of this uptrend, you know, is, is almost unsustainable. It's a bit parabolic in some regards. So the question is, now that they were coming into earnings, what sort of reaction were they going to have? Was that too far too fast? Were the earnings going to kind of knock them back a peg? Or were they going to see continuation? You know, was the market even uh, underestimating what the future guidance and, um, and report was showing? And I think when we look at Delta, which was the first name to report, um, my assumption going into UAL was that it was probably going to see a similar knockback. Um, nothing crazy, not like a full reversal in any regard, but coming from a high of about 40, this was approximately a, uh, an option-based target as well. We were looking at a lot of open interest at 40 a couple of days ago. That earnings report brought the stock back, you know, in this case, approximately 25 to 30 percent from that high. So, it's a pretty good knockback and definitely something tradable, um, even if you're coming into the earnings to see the, um, the actual reaction. But one thing that's notable as well is that even though it did pull back, a lot of that pullback was recovered. Um, we're seeing once again, just the uh, pullback being bought, starting to push into higher prices. And for now, I'm looking at UAL as it reported, and I'm not seeing the same characteristic. Um, they did not pull it back quite yet, actually made a new uh, trend high at this point. And they've also broken, for the time being, a weekly pivot. Now, I think that's kind of important because this particular pivot is quite an open area of the chart. If they were to have continued this, this would have been, you know, quite a, an area of opportunity. But one thing you'll notice here is not only the weekly pivot being important, but also the 200 weekly moving average. We've run into both of those on a fairly extended trend. You can kind of tell that the, even if I'm looking at how this particular asset moves, we've, we've pretty much completed an ABC type wave, you know, it, it's at this point, I wouldn't expect much more, even though it was quite fast. Running into those MAs, running into the pivot, it's not quite how Delta looks, but I would be looking to maybe fade this particular name. Um, the key though is does the market agree? You know, we could be at the right level, we could be at resistance on many time frames, but if the market disagrees, it's just not going to go down. It has to kind of showcase a little bit of weakness and maybe even have the targets available for that to work. And for that, I like to look at the option market because gaining technical targets sometimes requires technical setup and inside of an earnings reaction, we're expressing a lot of option risk. And for the most part, we're going to see if the market likes it or doesn't like it in the next couple of days. The actual um, future reaction of this stock will be more important for, um, for future trade. So UAL uh, coming into yesterday's trade was uh, closing at about 51.20. For, it looks like yesterday, let me take a look at this. The option market was pricing about a $3.25 expected move. Um, for those unfamiliar, we're using the option market here to essentially get an idea of what the volatility risk 
of the earnings reaction itself might be uh, akin to. And it's a good thing to know because sometimes the stock price doesn't really give you a sense of how volatile it can be. You could have a $40 stock, for example, that only really wants to move plus or minus 5%. And for that, it would be, you know, somewhere along the lines of $2. <clears throat> you can also have a $40 stock that just because it's priced at 40, it's pricing in the option world about a 15% move. And for those, you're gonna see a lot of like the um, technology names, some of the high growth sectors had a lot of that expected move. <clears throat> Excuse me, trying to get over this cough. And um, you know, for those, you can't really trade them the same way because their volatility is so much higher. And in the sense of a $40 stock moving 15%, that's a $6 move and supposed to too. So just knowing that small difference can save a lot of people uh, the pain of maybe disrespecting volatility or not knowing how important some of that price movement could be in the future, along with knowing if, if they need to hedge anything that that move is incoming, um, being able to protect yourself if it's going to start to get into areas where you want to stop out or maybe to um, to take profit, you know, if it's going to your target. So we often look at the option series for the week of the earnings, whatever the weekly series is. And we do have to take this with a grain of salt because Tuesday and Wednesday options that are inherently pricing Friday expirations, we have to use those series, even though it's not as accurate as a stock reporting on Thursday or Friday. Usually those are gonna be a little bit closer to what the earnings reaction looks like. Whereas the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday side, those are um, often gonna be, not always, but you, you might get a slight breach and then it comes back in just in time for the Friday expiration. So these prices here don't necessarily indicate that that's the move on the earnings reaction, but we want to get a sense of the entire weekly move. And the earnings reaction will encompass about uh, 90 to 100% of it uh, at one time. So um, UAL 2.3.25. Um, you can also look at a, a straddle if you are familiar with the construction of a straddle, you're just looking at the cost of a call and a put at the um, close to at the money x uh, close to at the money strikes. In this case, 5160, you'd be looking at a 51 straddle or a 52 straddle. Uh, try that again. Yeah, and both of these are priced at about three to three dollars ten cents. So, for the most part, this number will show you the volatility as more of an aggregate over the entire series. Looking at the at the money straddles is another way to get a sense of what that volatility looks like, because essentially by buying a straddle, you're saying that I don't care which direction the stock goes, but as long as it moves outside of what the option market thinks, I should be able to maneuver and basically be profitable on a strategy like that. Um, anytime the option market prices volatility, the straddles are going to represent what they're pricing. So that's kind of the idea behind a simple way to get the expected move. So, um, that kind of goes a little bit into the technique. It was a little scattered there. But this is an example of a stock where we can start to apply those techniques every single day. Um, we can do it into earnings. We can do it after earnings to kind of see how significant was the move. Did it breach? Did it stay inside? And then for the most part, there's a lot of option trade going on in general. So most of the time, the option market for a stock like UAL isn't as elevated as we see for earnings. 
you know, especially in that one series, you're going to see a large aggregation of open interest. And oftentimes, a very simple technique is just looking where the most open interest happens to be. Because if the stock is moving in a general direction, and there's a large open interest node, uh, you know, strike that has maybe a lot of calls and or puts, the market maker might be inclined to go there. And then some of the transactional value might take place when you get to those locations. So it kind of offers you an idea of if I can set up a trade that goes to one of those open interest nodes and I can manage sort of the risk of setting up that trade to get there, that is my target. And it makes it very simple when you should be starting to take profit along with where you're trying to go, which I think a lot of traders kind of struggle with. Um, they know maybe how to get into a trade and where to stop out, but they often struggle with targets. Um, this is one way to kind of get a sense of where stocks might be inclined to move throughout the day. And, you know, very simply the $50 strike, pretty simple observation that the open interest is quite high, but this is an in the money option series, uh, option uh, open interest. So all of these are intrinsic and they're in the money, which means unless we see counter move, like fading of the actual price activity, I wouldn't necessarily think that it's just going to shoot to 50. This is just where it's going to go to reload. If it ever wanted to maybe stall out or start to see a larger than average pullback, I would argue that 50 is the most likely place for it to get to and reestablish support. Um, otherwise, because it's moving slightly higher and it just has a little bit of a bullish lean, 55 was an obvious area of um, profitability for these types of um, traders. And it looks as if, you know, if we keep pushing, we might have to get to 55 first. It's, it's really just about who's coming first. So, um, yeah, and I, I think that's kind of a simple way we can look at this for now. We'll go into more of this as we get more stocks in play. But um, in general, just keep your uh, calendar open, know which stocks are coming, look into their option chain, get a sense of how volatile they're going to be. So for example, we have Procter & Gamble tomorrow. We could take a quick look at that one. That's a very simple one. We could say, based on how the option market is pricing things today, the weekly expected move is about 4.5. So. $150 stock moving 4.5. That's about an 8% move approximately, assuming everything the same. And then you can start to see where those open interest nodes are. You know, 155 stands out, but it's also within the expected move. So kind of makes sense that that's about where the market wants to trade. <clears throat> You'll also not notice a lot of downside. You know, the 150 is heavy, but no one's really looking lower on the stock. So it's it's kind of loaded more to the top side. Might give you a little bit more of a bullish lean, but respect the fact that it only wants to move about five bucks. So bullish with a top, you know, bullish with a very specific target. And that's obviously a very technical target too, getting right above uh, some of the consolidation high that we have on the stock right now. So. That's kind of how we use it. Um, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. We'll go into more detail and I'll lay out the strategy a little bit more clearly on tomorrow's session. Um, unfortunately, it's the last session of the week uh, just due to a shorter week, but I'll use that full time to, uh, to our advantage. So trade safe today. Have a great rest of your trade day and uh, we'll talk more tomorrow.
Oh, there we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market Prep. I hope everyone's having an amazing morning. Hopefully you guys had an incredible day yesterday. Uh, good morning, Norm. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning, brother. I'm doing all right. Still a little under, the, little under the weather, but I'm finally, I think, starting to get a little bit better. So good, man. Glad ahead. to hear that, my friend. Um, guys, uh, let's give Jared a big thumbs up for engineering the markets every single morning, uh, taking us through some some great insights there and overview of the overall uh, market. Give me one second, guys. Something got tangled up here and it's forcing my headphones one way. Okay, that's better. Um, all right, guys, welcome. Let's let's look at yesterday was tough. man. I don't know about you, uh, but yesterday was uh, was not an easy day for me. Um, I had a lot going on as well, but for the most part, the market seemed to have been uh, a little bit on the choppier side of things. Uh, and let's go ahead and zoom into our charts here, starting with, uh, let's look at uh, Roblox. We have Roblox on deck. We'll look at our five minute as well. Let's start here with Roblox. Roblox had a, a crazy pop of guys uh, yesterday pre-market. Uh, going from 33 all the way up to 39 almost and back down. Uh, market open, though, was a little bit tough to trade. They didn't really give you a great continuation. You did have a couple of moves here, but the price action was pretty tough to get in on this one. Um, I was watching this closely because it had great volume, have moved very nicely uh, at, at the pre-market action. But again, just a tough one to trade. Uh, for the intraday. So didn't really find an opportunity there. It just seemed like it just moved, side, like it wanted to sell off, but it didn't. It kept coming back and it just kind of went sideways for the majority of the day. Uh, Mara was extremely choppy. And I, I thought today, uh, yesterday was going to be one of the days where we finally find some opportunities here. But look at every candle just overlapping the previous candle, the price action really all over the place. Great, great scalping type place here. But for Anything else like open range breakup or any continuation play, he just didn't get that uh, with Mara, especially like the first two, three hours. Uh, there was not much going on. You finally got a sell off here midday, but it didn't go nowhere. You know, and this is the problem with these lower price stocks. It just don't move a whole lot, right? Uh, it was like a 20 cents drop or so. So not nothing happening there with Mara. One that was great and again, never disappoints is Tesla. Um, Tesla yesterday had a nice breakout there. Unfortunately, this is not the one I was watching closely, uh, but look at the breakout here. It does give you a pop. You get this drop here and you get this uh, uh, this um, uh, engulfing type. Some people call it also a, a, a bearish sandwich, right? So it means it's going to be a bullish, right? The bears are eating the... Uh, the bulls are eating the bear and then you can see how this breaks out nicely so again nice play there i'm sure if you look at the one minute usually when you get this type of pattern if you look at the one minute you're going to see a, a, a nice abcd pattern as well forming there so that turned out pretty nice beautiful breakout there and you can see how how well that traded all the way up to 130 and then then it came back to the view i did test that a little bit too much um, of a drop here below the view app but it did recover and again goes towards the high and then higher so tesla yesterday traded very well this morning again these guys are having a nice little comeback right comeback right now they're up uh 3.8 this morning up to 137.50 the highs of the pre-market tons of volume as usual so tesla will be on this list again here's baba not much to see here i mean this was more of a possible for me i want to see if there's anything happening there the, all the chinese tickers were down uh, but it didn't really give us any opportunities um amazon was very nice guys had a slowdown period between uh it was 9 45 or so to about 10 30 just sideways could not break the slow eventually does give you a nice drop here towards the low of the day and the continuation so that was nice if you're patient uh waiting through this back and forth here uh for about what, almost an hour uh, almost an hour it's just deciding what it wants to do eventually does break down and trace real nicely into that into the mid uh uh, midday there and then just more sideways action in the afternoon parts of the day and then apple again rough start as well uh very similar to many of the other stocks that i was watching rough start eventually at 10 30 30 minutes in you get this beautiful breakout um all the way up to 137 and it doesn't last long comes right back down to the to the view so again just a lot of lot of sideways action not a whole lot of great uh, trades that we're used to seeing uh, and when the market is moving the way it is right now. So um, looking at our gappers list right now, we do have a couple of things in the green. Market, I believe, is slightly up, but I saw there were some movements uh, recently. We'll look at that in a second, um, but slightly up this morning. A couple of names in here, some that we know we don't we don't like, like EDU, Carvana, those that trade very well, but we will dive into those. And then Blue and YMM. Okay, what is Blue? Is Blue Blue Apron? No, something else. Um, we'll dive into these down uh, down quite a bit, 8%, 4%. We'll 
we'll see what's happening there uh norm as far as the overall market uh what's going on today any news that yeah, watching. we just had retail sales and retail sales without automotive stuff in there. I'll be frank, I missed that number, but I did get PPI that came in. Oh, no, nope, there it is. Retail sales uh, minus 1.1, which was expected to be minus 1%. So just a little bit cooler than expected. <laughs> and then uh, X Autos. Also, actually, that was quite a bit cooler than expected, minus 1.1 versus minus 0.5% expected. PPI, which is an inflationary measure, came in at minus 0.5% versus uh, expected minus 0.1. So a good amount cooler there. And then the um, we've got industrial production and capacity utilization in 915 number of fed speakers per, uh, throughout the day national home builders index at 10 along with business inventories and beige book at two so um yeah full day of data obviously the data that came out just a few minutes ago right as we were coming on uh has caused a shift in the trend in the market so let's see let's see where we go all right uh sounds good we'll keep an eye on that see how that continues to develop there um all right guys let's go into our gap up uh, gappers list uh look at our gap up first i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna remove control a control x cleans this up i will add of course uh tesla on here because that is going to be on our list so we'll add that one there um, also on our gappers list here of 5.3 uh, but starting from the top we have atlx the first two are very very low flow stocks 4.2 and then 688,000. Uh, atlx is the 4.2 here and these guys don't look great the volume right now it's not even worth looking at this thing right we need a whole lot more volume to even look at a 4.2 million shares flow last couple of days they gapped up some time ago here uh looks like uh end of december then they had a gap they have a yeah they had a gap of several days maybe it was halted this just this is fishy guys i just want no parts of that uh, <laughs> they halted before christmas or, or stopped trading before christmas again it's just not worth touching that thing uh tc uh bp here they are this they were neither yeah this was uh active yesterday as well yeah again, this is just, a yeah, uk biotech i yeah be very careful low yeah, float yeah. very low float it's six hundred eighty-eight thousand guys again just not not worth it um let's take a look at some other stuff on here mrna this morning gapping up 6.7 doesn't trade as good as it used to a couple of, of months almost a year back now um but it's up 6.7 today any news nor uh earnings or something no not not earnings um Sure uh guys. no it's got an rsv vaccine uh that's in the works and that's popping it up on a little bit of news from that so okay so they're seeing a little bit of action this morning i, I don't know guys i i it's a possible i uh, i like the pop this morning i like the daily here it hasn't been trading well so i'm not i'm not a uh, super hyped about it or expect anything great out of this uh we will see we will see let's, let's put it there as a possible we will come back to that and take a closer look um edu is a chinese education company that i don't really trade or, or want to be involved in uh united airlines is on here american airlines is on here they did Delta have earnings here. yesterday i believe on, on did? edu um oh he did okay. okay yeah but or last night i'm not quite sure mm -hmm. either way yeah. Yeah, careful with this stuff, guys. It, it trades horrible. Um, I know it could be exciting to see something go from, you know, 37 to 40 to 42, 43 very quickly. But again, just be very, very careful. Um, we got the airlines here today. We got United, we got American, we got Delta all on deck. United leading the way up 4% this morning with a decent pre-market activity for the way they trade. Out of all of these, I think they usually have the worst pre-market action and intraday action. Um, but they can trade okay at, at the intraday. So, uh, Norm, any news on these guys? I mean, they've just been crushing it. Uh, looking at UAL now on the they day. They had earnings last night after the uh, bell. Ah, there we go. So, UAL, guys, again, just their daily looks incredible. I'm going to add these guys to the list. Um, did American or Delta did, or it's just sympathy right now for these guys? Or did yeah, they also sympathy. sympathy? Uh, American, okay. uh, they pre-released a while back. If you remember, we had it in play yeah. a week or so ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they, like American reports on the 26th, 
yeah, I got a 26 year as well. Um, again, American Airlines guys, it, it, all of these guys actually, they just Delta been, already reported. Yeah, they, so. they've been ripping here. So, um, American Airlines, I did have them on my list yesterday. They didn't trade so well, pretty much a flat day compared to the last uh, three trading days here. They move very well, at last four trading days. Uh, but again, we'll see what it does today. I'm going to add them as a possible uh, for now, but United Airlines is the one with the news. And, and you could watch Delta if you prefer it, but I think United and uh, American Airlines, I prefer to trade these two if I am going to trade uh, any of the airlines uh, today. Um, Tesla's on deck, guys, looking very good. 6.6 6 million shares traded, tons of volume. Here's Carvana. Had a good week last week, going from $4 to 8 so they're you know doubling their 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 price there is nice um this morning they're sitting at 755 with a uh what it looks like up 3.3 with 280 to uh thousand shares traded once this thing gets above 20 i'll start looking at it um if there's any hopes <laughs> but uh i just don't see anything happening we got we do have a short flow interest at 58 um yeah so, they have a very you know, high short flow so you could be getting a little squeeze they're, happening. Right? Well, they're memeing a little bit. I'd be very cautious of a squeeze here, but they also mm -hmm. did some corporate action, adopted a poison pill. They've been memeing a bit, but they uh, they sold some loans. They they so we'll see we'll see what it does it, when it's trading in this price point. Just not very attractive to me. Really. Yeah. Yeah, uh, same here. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens here, guys. I'm not going to add it to my list. Not even as a possible right now, but I'm sure somebody will be watching it. And if it hits our scanners for making some noise and doing something interesting, because it could be memeing today, uh, you know, we can we can look at it. ZIM this morning, they're up 3%, 180,000. I, I don't like this ticker at all. I think it trades very, very light volume. Today, we're seeing a little bit of a pop here. Uh, I'm just not... Uh, uh, inclined to have this on my list. I hope to find something better than ZIM uh, today. Uh, Rivian. Rivian's been making a lot of noise lately uh, in the intraday action. I think it was yesterday. They were, they were moving quite a bit here. Yeah, they got going late. Uh, not late, but mid-morning. Had a nice run. It was hitting all the scanners and then came back. So it's moving averages popped up again. So good run from like a 16 to 17. Doesn't really show on the on the daily uh, because again, they, they went to the bottom of the range here and then popped up to the top of the range. So mid, they had a good, good uh, breakout there. Uh, today, they're at the top of this um, range they've been stuck in. So that could be interesting if they can break out of this with some volume. Right now, up 1.6. They don't have the volume at the moment. I think this could be a good possible if there's any news that comes out that can get these guys going. Uh, I think this could be an opportunity there. But again, had a good rip yesterday. I'm not sure if that can uh, continue on to today. Gapping down this morning, we have blue, which uh, again, just doesn't look all that good right now. Down 9.3, uh, 387,000. Again, once we start getting below 10 bucks here, guys, it's, it's a whole different animal to trade. It's on news um, of a possible secondary as well. So. Oh, so not even great news. Yeah. Yeah. So not even great news, guys. So we'll leave that alone. Uh, F-U-L-C. Uh, what is this? Down oh, 6.7. I, I thought you were going somewhere else with that when you first started. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going there. Uh, <laughs> but um, F-U-L-C here. See, the, the funny thing about uh, Futu, when, it, when that ticker first came out, I didn't plan to call it out like that. It just happened. You know, it was so funny. I it just, just came read, naturally. It just came naturally. Like there was no plans of me saying F you to you at all. It's just, I'm like, why did I read that like that? I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> that was hilarious, man. I stuck definitely <laughs> for sure. Uh, F U L C. This looks horrible, guys. The daily, I mean, I, I don't know. This looks pretty bad. I don't know what kind of company it, it is. It's a therapeutics company, it looks like. Um, but again, I just don't see anything great for the way I trade, right? It's been having a heck of a run here. Uh, but just uh, right now, pre-market and everything else doesn't look all that exciting to me. Um, YMM, uh, this is down 5%. Volume extremely light as well. Daily all over the place. Uh, almost looks for me. I'm not sure, but it's very it's gappy. Chinese. It is. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it's very gappy. Chinese trucking. Uh, no thanks. Yeah. No way, man. No way. No way. So uh, we will we will skip on that there. All right, guys, very slim pickings today, although this list is big. There's not a whole lot that looks great on here. Um, uh, Norm, anything you like on your end so far? I mean, I'm short Tesla right now. Other than that, nice. I'm still looking around. Yeah, Tesla, man, is the only thing that's looking very good this morning. 
um and again the daily has been real nice last couple of days these two days have been really really nice intraday action has been very clean mostly broke out of this area here so yeah tesla very very nice today um guys what do you guys like today united airlines earnings last night yes that's on deck so i already have that on here um up four percent uh pre-market action looks actually for united airlines this is a great pre-market activity guys Six hundred fifty-one thousand. they normally don't get that type of volume um the last couple of days i mean the airlines has just been crushing it um so they've been doing very very well um so we'll see what happens there american airlines same thing i have i have united and american as a secondary both looking very good prty sure squeeze that sounds i think it's a lower price tick oh it's a penny stock no 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 no, no. trade uh got halted right now right due to news yeah we'll see how that plays out but again this this has no part in in my yeah, trading uh, stay away from that and, guys be careful yeah, no part at all tesla is good guys united is good our traders are giving us nvidia what what have the semis been doing i had no semis yesterday on my list um here is nvidia's uh oh i had a big day yesterday actually uh yeah i had a nice nice day yesterday look at the breakout here they get a continuation very nice how about amd so the day i don't have these on my list uh oh, amd not so clean nvidia was much much better um because uh, look, if you look at it, AMD, see how how nasty these pullbacks are. How do you survive a pullback like that if you get in here for a long right on a, on this pullback? It's just too way too deep. So um, very very nasty. Uh, the first thirty minutes, Nvidia was much much cleaner. So yeah, see that's nice, nice little pullback there, and then recovers. Nice ABCD pattern, bull flag. Yeah, everything's going on there, looking very good. Uh, let's put Nvidia on deck today. I like the daily. I like I like how strong they were yesterday. Uh, leaving this area of 170 they you know they've been struggling to get above that here you can see it's an area where they have a lot of support and resistance um that broke out nicely to 176 so let's see where that uh, takes us today um already looking good as far as pre-market action could use more volume uh, but we're getting there um now pnc uh the queues yeah ross we'll, we'll be watching the queues right so you're saying sqqq yeah, we'll be watching the queues as we always do. We'll be watching um, the SPY and just kind of see how this news continues to develop here. SPY pushing up a little bit higher. Um, yeah, we'll be as usual. We'll keep an eye on those. Uh, PNC, I think PNC is a it's, it's a bank, right? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Oh, they're they're getting a big drop here. Five point eight, uh, sixty seven thousand. It's a big big drop. I don't know how these guys trade um, as Very far as intraday the spread on that. Yeah, I mean they've they're, got very little volume. It's quite spready. Yeah, Be and careful. I'm seeing here they barely get any volume compared to like the other, like even Bank of America gets more volume than this, West Fargo and others. So this must a be a more. very, yeah, this must be a very slim, uh, uh, very light volume type stock. So careful with that. One hundred fifty-two dollars uh, spread might get better at the market open, but if you are going to trade this, uh, be on the lookout for that. I do like this drop here right now. That looks very good, down five point five. Um, but again a possible if it even gets volume guys the only time we will even even look at this uh, my name is stick around as a possible if it doesn't get any better quickly and video looks good and video is good uh danny g don't like pnc yeah and i don't think i ever looked at pnc as far as trading um doesn't look good uh nvidia we have uber um let's take a look over some of the stuff we have over here on youtube uber uh what's going on with uber up 1.2 they got some volume here daily looks like it wants to uh break out um i'm let's look at this as a possible for now in case he hits the scanners and even then you guys know how uber is it's very difficult to trade um they just don't trade well even with volume even with news uh these guys are just they find a way to be choppy it reminds me a little bit of footlocker uh I, intc uh you know it's just they're they're, they're with volume and music, it's still be choppy. Goldman Sachs day was yesterday, guys. So today, I don't know if you're going to get anything today. Yesterday was the day for this one. Look at the beautiful short you got there. Just uh, just uh, insane drop with volume. I don't think today you're going to get much. I could be wrong, but if I, me, I'm not going to look at this one today. Yesterday was the day where you had to look at this. Uh, so a continuation play, Mac, maybe, maybe back down to 343. But you're not going to get this type of range. At least I don't think so, right? um unless this was a huge overreaction um you know maybe we can head back towards the top side a little bit but i, I doubt it uh delta airlines uh united airlines bless you norm uh Thank you. we have both of those you could have you could have delta as well it's moving along with like american and united um but i'm gonna keep united and american for now and 
let's see what else we have here. Dustin, we'll do one more for you. You gave us a lot today. Uh, we'll do one more for you. DKNG. Eh, no, I see what you're looking at. Possible breakout, but I'm just not sure on that one. Um, uh, we have a lot of these on here already. I look at Amazon because Amazon is real, real nice. And this morning already, man, 900,000. You know what? I do like Amazon. Uh, we do have space for it. So I'll look at that one. Baba was horrible yesterday. I'm not going to add them to my list today. Uh, unless they're doing anything crazy. No, they're pretty flat right now. So nothing to see there. Um, and Mara, uh, Mara guys, Mara was brutal yesterday. R reminder of why I don't like this ticker at all. Uh, the daily has been doing some stuff here, but yesterday was just horrible, horrible. Um, AMC is AMC has good volume. Has it been, have they been doing anything? Okay. They had a pop yesterday. Um, 57. Yeah. I mean, you had to wait for it the entire day. that you got this here. See, this is, this is just not my type of trading. You know, how do you plan for something like this? Right uh just just be careful guys be very very careful on this thing uh let's take a look at apple 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 could be a good one for today I, again they tried to get going yesterday they did but they just came right back this morning they got great volume already yeah i like apple so one of our usual suspects on deck um here this morning all right last one here and then we'll head over to community events and announcement bank of america they reported already right uh did they report already? yes bank of america yeah so See, I think I think that's it, man. I think once they report, you're gonna have that initial reaction. Um, you gotta now just let things settle out and see if they're gonna if there was an overreaction, maybe you're gonna get a continuation today. But I highly doubt it. Banking stocks just don't move uh, like that, right? Um, so unless there's any news that can cause you know this type of movement, and what happens when you're having this type of movement? Usually something else is trading better. When the banking stocks are moving like this, right? You usually have something else. Uh, one of our usual suspects that's trading a whole lot better and that's where they kind of end up taking the backseat and we only really look at them as a primary ticker uh when they report right when they report like they did yesterday uh gsb one of that traded very very well all right guys let's head over to community events and announcements we will come back and fine tune um this list uh so we uh so we move forward here all right. Every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, you've got Carlos with Onboarding and Technology. That's in the classroom and available to all membership categories. Be sure to check that out, especially for newer traders. On Tuesdays, you've got Strategy. Last night was Thor talking about his book. That'll be uh, up soon, hopefully. And then uh, next week, Paris is going to be talking about reading the tape. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern next Tuesday. Wednesdays we have for psychology. Tonight we've got Mike at 8 p.m. talking about identifying what money means to you and getting over the uh, psychological hurdles of thinking about trading in terms of P&L and money. Uh, then next week, Randy Howell will be discussing uh, keeping emotional control when you're trading real money. That's also at 8 p.m. Thursday, we have uh, mentorship at 11 a.m. with John and 8 p.m. with Thor. Tradingterminal.com is your one-stop shop for all your trading tools. We are uh, building this thing out, adding features all the time. We have some exciting new announcements coming out next week, so stay tuned for that. Some really cool features that uh, hopefully will be ready to roll by next week at the latest. Uh, all kinds of stuff here for free, guys, that uh, people spend thousands of dollars for, like this replay simulator you're looking at, uh, scanners, uh, all kinds of great stuff. Then uh, March 2nd and 3rd is our San Diego Live Trading Summit um, two-day event. We are selling tickets to that currently. You can also bring a guest to the dinner uh, the first night. They don't have to take part and get a full full ticket to the event. They can just come to dinner and hang out. Uh, it's in San Diego, March 2nd and 3rd, as I mentioned. You can check it out, link to it by the from the homepage or bearbulltraders.com slash workshop. All right. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you haven't been in the room, you'd like to try it out, use the promo code PREMARKET34 with that intro membership. It'll get you a discount. It bills you one time. It does not recur. You can try out the room with no obligation. Be sure to check that out. And if you'd like to become an elite member, use the promo code WINNER50 for half off the elite annual membership. All right. Thank you uh, very much, Norm. 
um all right guys let's get to some stuff here i uh, saw so, uh, donovan over and youtube was asking what's the sympathy play i saw melanie one of our, our viewers on youtube did answer that correctly so basically when you have a sy sympathy play for those that don't know in this case you have united airlines which is the the ticker today that has a catalyst right their catalyst is earnings right they reported earnings uh last night right united airlines ua yeah Yep, right here. Last night, uh, January 17. So what's happening is usually stocks within that same uh, sector, which is going to be obviously airlines like uh, American and uh, Delta, they're also my move in sympathy. If United reported, you know, good, good, uh, uh, had a good report, a uh, good, a uh, good um, uh, numbers, and as well as. Uh, guidance right so the future guidance was what's happening there so if they reported good stuff usually all the other airlines are going to fall in place and they might be move but might be moving even if they don't have their earnings yet they might be moving on that news and that's usually we call it a, a sympathy play right so that's what's happening there um and it can happen not just with airlines obviously it can happen with anything so if you have uh tech companies that are reporting well or like social media companies if you have uh um you know manufacturing companies in the same field they can also move move together so good question um guys let's get to our list right now i have tesla i have united airlines hey peter's back in chat i think it's the uh, first time i seen peter i'm not sure if he joined yesterday but peter well, hope you're this is the hope, first time we've had first him back, time. So welcome back all right welcome Glad back your peter, man. yeah yeah absolutely so we definitely miss you on the mic man so good to have you back and and, and hopefully uh uh things are going as, as smooth as expected um so yeah guys uh so at the moment we have tesla we have united we have nvidia uh we have A amazon as well doing some stuff here everything seems to be pushing northeast at the moment um american um, apple also uh getting some good volume right now 819 uh so so yeah i de definitely like this on here as far as secondary i have mrna which has a nice cap up of six percent i just don't trust this ticker is going to trade very well uh american airlines sympathy play with united rivian rivian had a, had a, a good rip yesterday they're not doing a lot right now but if they can get out of this range i think there could be an opportunity here for rivian uh to give us a nice pop maybe towards 18 1850 will be nice we'll be on the lookout for that pnc i love this drop here that we're getting this morning on pnc um but again this is just one of the, the tickers that the spread is horrible and it doesn't trade very well and very very light volume compared to other banking uh, institutions so um just got to be careful with this but let's see if the market open can prove us wrong if we can get some some action out of this one the last couple of days like uh, gs yesterday was really nice guys beautiful beautiful into the action again you don't see this out of gs on regular days but uh, gs yesterday was very nice so hopefully we can get something like that um and then we have uber supposed which has tons of volume looking to break out here on the daily has had a great run as well um, very similar to what the airlines have been doing, right? They had this bottoming out action here in the last couple of weeks. They've just been on a tear. Uber, same thing here. So maybe those those two move in, in conjunction, which makes sense, right? More travel. The first thing I do when I get off the plane is, you know, get that Uber, right? So uh, maybe things are looking good here for these guys. All right, um, let's go ahead and, and uh, do some levels and then we'll, we'll come back and see if there's anything else that's worth looking at. But at the moment, I think we have a pretty, not a blockbuster list, but there's some stuff here that can trade very well, depending how things uh, settle out uh, at the market open. High of the pre-market on Tesla is 137.50. We will slam a level there. Above this, guys, we got another great level over at 147.70. This is an area because you do want to cover uh, this drop and this pop here. So 147.70. Um, then towards the bottom, this is a nice gap. Uh, in between here, we do have one, one, just one level here at 141.23. I wouldn't put too much weight on that, but again, just in, in case we do become explosive here, uh, you have two levels towards the top that you can count on. Uh, towards the bottom, I mean, you are set, guys. You have everything you need, highs and lows for the last two trading days. Uh, previous day closed pretty much the, the high of yesterday, slamming right on there at that 131.50. So you're pretty much set, guys. Don't need, do not need to add anything else. Uh, towards the bottom towards tesla the last couple of days have been pretty good for them looking a little toppy here in the pre-market so i see why uh norman short here uh, might be looking to lose the vwap so we'll see where that goes um united airlines um again earnings last night so it could be in play today they, the the airlines have had an incredible uh run here the last couple of weeks 
high of the pre-market on united is going to be 5350 so we will slam a level there low of the pre-market is going to be 52 uh, 30 so we put another level there as well and very similar to many stocks that have been kind of bottoming out and just kind of bottom bottoming bottoming that out and then here you see the highs and lows of the last two trading days you don't need to add much towards the bottom because you're kind of getting you know that that step up that kind of abcd pattern action so usually when you have that um the highs and lows for the last two trading days are going to do a pretty good job of setting those levels for you plus the law of the pre-market. So do not need to add anything else above this pre-market high, just in case we get going. Um, it might be worth marking down yesterday's high after hours was at 54.33. Might be worth marking that down. Does that mean anything for United? Let's head back here. Um, oh, we haven't been up here uh, in some time. When was this? So last time we were up here, we were well, okay we, we got above for this year which is april of last year um and then before that okay we have something here 54 yeah this 54 33 we saw last night could be right from this year from this daily right over there back in november of 2021 so uh it's, it's been a while since we've been uh, up here guys uh we're going to do another level here just in case off the daily 55 29 again that'll be that'll be a push there but um they got the momentum they've been doing so well the last couple of days could be a little bit extended here on the daily maybe they're, they're due for some profit taking or some or, or some a bit of a drawback but we will see um uh, nvidia guys looking really good had a big day yesterday low of the pre-market right now 175.55 so you got a nice little drop there came back to the previous day close trying to stay in the green the high of the pre-market right now is 177.81 above this we do have plenty of clean levels at 179.92 might actually be 180 um, might actually be 180 um, but above that we do have 82.46 and then we will slam one right here of course at 87.63 so again just an incredible run over the last couple of days uh you you found some support here right i got stuck in this range for about seven or so days and then look at the nice little breakout we had uh the last couple of days nothing but green days here guys even on the gap downs you got a couple of gap downs here uh one here nothing but green days on uh, on nvidia so very very nice um amazon guys tons of volume and look at the rip you're getting here so it looks like it wants to break out from the high of the day high of the pre-market at the moment um let's wait for this to settle out but as far as levels you're set man highs and lows for the last two trading days up here around 99.98 towards the bottom previous day close covering your low of your pre-market right on here and then you have the low from the last two trading days as well so plenty of levels surrounding the price action this thing looks like it wants to get going here um so we'll give it a little bit and we'll mark our high of the pre-market uh in a second um if we were to get a massive move which i don't expect today unless uh, uh the spy allows it it's going to be 112 and then all the way up here around 103 56 tons of action there you got a couple of days opening and closing right around that level um so that's looking pretty good uh last but not least is going to be apple one of our usual suspects and today they're also uh moving pretty nice here very similar to what uh, amazon is doing right ripping higher volume it looks great as well uh, but they're daily much much cleaner guys so we're, we're trying to get above this area of resistance here this is the high from yesterday as well where we're struggling to come back and test that right now it looks like 137 30. let's see if we can get there if we break out of that the next big level and look how clean uh, apples apples daily chart so clean look how clean this chart is right here i mean 141 you cannot miss this level 141 19 is the, is the next level we have the next big level on here this is a big gap so we want to uh go to the left and see what else we can find there's a, quite an interesting area around 139 right so if you look at these five days here uh 139 seems to have a lot of a uh, couple of touches on there opening and closing so that might be worth marking down but uh, but the big level of course is at 141 30 141 19 uh, being a great area support for for apple man just i love stocks when they have a great daily a clean daily like this right um as you can see the supports easily the the price action is is very clean and very easy to identify these levels of support and resistance so um apple looking very nice this morning trying to break out from the highs of the of, of yesterday and this morning's pre-market action so 
Apple looking very, very good, man. I like Apple today. Hopefully it can trade well because yesterday, uh, yesterday we look at yesterday's action. I mean, it was a rough start, which again, it happens. Very, very rough start. They give you a breakout, but there was no follow through, man. It came right back down and slammed into the moving averages. Uh, and then if it will slam here and then go back up, great, but it doesn't do that. It goes even lower. So then once you have this, it's just don't, it's just very difficult to uh, to to time this type of activity when you're you're blowing past the moving averages, right? That is your view app line there. So you're you're above and below it very aggressively. So it's very hard to 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 uh, to time if we're going to bounce here or not. So very very difficult there. Um, but show to IBM. I mean, I don't trade IBM. IBM is one of these uh, very low volume uh, tickers. Um, even now with this drop of 1.2, look how much volume we have traded, you know, 67. So I don't think I ever trade IBM, maybe once by mistake, realize this is not a stock you want to day trade at all. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a brutal, brutal stock to, uh, to enter day trade, right? It's just, you just don't get the volume. Uh, if you look at it here, their best days when, again, when we're dropping like this, uh, what we had here, uh, not even 10 million shares traded. Um. And when was this? This was, uh, we got a little time. This was uh, December 15. What happened December 15? Did we have a big move on December 15? Not on tech. Um, and NVIDIA December 15. Oh, no, they're moving on their own. We had a gap down in NVIDIA. Um, Tesla. Tesla's just been going down <laughs> all, all month. All month, December, they've been just going down. There was just no no mercy on Tesla. Um but yeah, usually, actually, they had their own thing going on, on on December 15. But usually when you see this type of action, especially in the banking sector, it's, you know, there's other tickers that are moving uh, uh, very well. Melanie, yes, yes, we got to slam those levels. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so thank you for that. Guys, if you haven't done so already over on YouTube, hit that thumbs up. Uh, we appreciate it very much. I don't even know what the likes. I don't have the, the number of likes up, um, but hopefully we're above 200. Let me Let me go check. Um, 127, almost there, almost there. So thank you guys for those that have already slammed that thumbs up. If you want to slam it again, uh, that'd be great. If you haven't done so already, appreciate it. All right. Moderators list. What we got going on? 909. So moderators list right now. We have Eamon. We have Peter. His wa He's watching his, just watching for today. So no watch list for him as he eases his way back into trading. Um, Jared, we have him uh and yeah let's get let's get this over over here and we'll see what our what our team is watching this morning so not a whole lot to pick from right? it's not a whole lot to pick from and um but that would change i think it's still going to turn to a good day uh let's check the spy spy is uh the spy can rip here it can definitely help see the, the spy has become such a, a um a force when it comes to stuff in play. Look at it yesterday. I had a tough day yesterday as far as finding opportunities. Look, look at this year. The spies just didn't do anything, right? And that, and this, a lot of stocks I was watching. That's what they did. They just didn't really move anywhere. Um, so we'll see if today uh, we can get some momentum going. Not saying that that's the case, right? Because you had other stuff like uh, was it Amazon? Amazon was uh, yeah. Amazon was great. Amazon has a beautiful, beautiful dropping and then continuation. You had Goldman Sachs was also really good. So there is opportunities, but um, there are less opportunities when the SPY is not, uh, it's not trending nicely. Um, all right, we'll bring this over. Moderators list for today. Um, and uh, we will get this day rocking and rolling. Today is, today is Wednesday. Yes, today is Wednesday. Um, so we do have psychology today, guys, T tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you check uh, check that out. All right. Uh, so right now we have Eamon looking at West Fargo, WFC. Uh, Peter, as I mentioned before, just watching today, getting back into trading. Welcome back, Peter. Jared uh, looking at United, Roku, Coin, secondary list, Tesla, and NVIDIA for him right now, which, uh, uh, again, both, uh, some of these looking really good. Tesla has been incredible. Um, looks like Amazon is going to break the high of the pre-market here. Definitely pushing for it. Um, it's got some good volume as well. Um, so yeah, that's what we have right now, guys. We'll wait for some more moderators to throw out their list, and then we will we will call it a day. As far as earnings, let's look at our earnings calendar. We've got a little bit of time here. Um, guys, so you could do this by going to tradingterminal.com. Uh, right? Let me actually, I got to sign in. 
Um, when you sign in, it's completely free. Uh, and, you, and what I like about it, you can sign in with your um, Google account. So you don't need to go in there and start putting all your information. Just sign in with your Google account and you can you can get right in. You can also sign in with Twitter. I see that. So that's pretty uh, pretty cool. It'll save you, save you some time uh, as you're doing this. So let me go ahead and sign in here. And let's see what what our earnings looks like for uh, for the rest of this week and and next as we uh, got a couple of minutes. All right, here we go. Looking forward to getting to some tech tech stuff here. Um, all right, guys. So here's our trading terminal. Um, dot com again. It's completely free. All you do is just sign in. Then you're gonna be able to save some of your your settings there. Um, let's see as far as calendar. So let's see what's going on there. This today we had a few banking tickets. Yes, yeah, not a not a lot of good companies right now um, that I see on here. So not not a lot of great stuff. Um, Netflix tomorrow. Oh, that'll be fun. So Netflix tomorrow. That's gonna be good. Looking forward to see what, what's happening there. They had a nice run as well after that huge gap down. So more banking uh, institutions there. And Friday, not a whole lot going on on Friday. How about next week? When do we start getting to the big heavy hitters? Uh, next week, my okay, okay, next week. Yeah, next week looks good. We have Microsoft, we have Tesla. So it's put, putting out some big names here. Um, <laughs> GE, which, yeah, they'll, they'll move. Um, yeah, got some some nice names coming up next week. Intel, which again, once once in a while they do very well. All right, look forward to that. Looking forward to that, especially Tesla and Microsoft. Uh, Verizon is so so. And then the following week, we got okay. The following week, January thirty to the third of uh of February, that is when you can start getting into the the heavy hitters here, guys. So McDonald's, you got UPS, you got Meta, Apple, Google. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. All right, looking forward to that. That's gonna create a lot of a uh, volatility for us to take advantage of. So um. So yeah, that's a earnings ramp up here. Uh, some more um, tickers. We have Susan looking at Tesla, Netflix, Amazon, and Meta. And then secondary list, AMD, UA, UAL, United there, and also MR, uh, NA, uh, NA so far. So, all right, guys, that is what we have. Um, thank you so much for joining the pre-market uh, show this morning. I appreciate it very, very much. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't done so already. 193. Oh, man. Come on. Come on, guys. We need seven people to just uh, lift that finger and slam that button. We could do this. 194, 200. Thank you so much, guys. I feel much better now. Uh, I can definitely, uh, my day is complete at this moment. <laughs> guys, trade safe. We will see you all tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care, guys. Trade safe.